What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of a mobile ride along, a fragrance review with Uncommon Sense. Today's mobile review is going to center around a fragrance for house. I've not done a mini reviews on one of the perfumers I tend to enjoy. That perfume house is Montal. The perfumer is Pierre Montal, perfumer of Montal and Mancera. Today's fragrance is Food Ever. Let's get a spritz. Fresh. Sprayed it on earlier. Eight or nine sprays across the body. Usually with Montal and Mancera fragrances, you do not need that many. I did not need that many. However, I wanted to give it a full wearing and get the full experience of the fragrance. So that's what I did for the purpose of the review. Every single day, I'm gonna make something great. That's my way. Every single day, I'm gonna make something great. That's my presentation a lot of folks already rag on these bottles and say they hate the bottle it does favor a can of hairspray when facts are facts facts are not feelings it does resemble a can of aerosol of some sort however I like the dangly bit I don't have a problem with the can it does tend to feel much lighter than a 3.4 ounce that can be a bit misleading I'm gonna rate it a seven and a half XP price it is a niche fragrance but i feel like it's an accessible niche fragrance i paid 75 bucks for it for 3.4 i don't think that was a bad price i'm gonna rate it at eight there i feel like i get a lot of quality juice for the price now let's get into the note breakdown in the top In the mid, and in the base, what do I smell? I smell a very citric, woody, oody vetiver which I happen to really like. This is the type of fragrance that I feel is very gentlemanly and stand out. It reminds me a little bit of great vetiver in the fact that it is so gentlemanly. These types of fragrances really get me excited. It's a standalone that I feel is exceptional for this time of year. Heading into summer, I feel like this type of oud is more or less of an entry level oud that gets individuals excited namely myself. These types of fragrances are the ones that will get non-oud lovers on board. Not a skanky animalic oud at all. It's a outdoorsy type of oud. This one's probably more of a vetiverish oud. I kind of get a peppery lime oud type of feeling about this one. I like it. This is, this is one I've not smelled anything like it before. It does have an appeal like Grey Vetiver, nothing like Grey Vetiver, but they can stand toe to toe. Know what I mean? Good. Glad we're seeing out of the eye there. I have Beach Hut Man by Amouage, and if Beach Hut Man did this, I would not have hated it. It does kind of have that fresh, peppery thing, but Montal Oud ever does it right. Beach Hut did it. They did it grossly. And I hated it. But this fragrance, this fragrance just really suits me. And I've come to learn certain fragrance houses appeal to me more than others. It's not about necessarily the brand name or 
how much you pay for the fragrance. What it's more or less about for me is the brand's values alignment with mine. If and when we have an alignment of the two, then we can kind of rock together. Especially if I'm gonna spend my hard earned money. Flat out. Gray market, black market, trade, swap, don't matter. If our values don't align, I'm not spending my money on you. I don't give a damn. And that's just that. Now, place. Where would I wear this fragrance to? I feel like this is an outdoor style fragrance. I would wear this fragrance to an outdoor event, whether it be a festival in the park, crowd events, brunch, outdoor dining, rooftop events. This is the type of fragrance that needs to be outdoors. I don't know if I would want to be in an indoor event smelling this great. Because I feel like this type of fragrance benefits from a breeze and benefits from sillage and wafting. I would like the, to experience it more that way. I wore it the other day on a walk and I got gentle breezes of it and I enjoyed it more that way. Next P, performance. As with most Mansara and Montals, the performance, stellar, spot on. I'm gonna give it a 10 in performance. This fragrance got on the collar of one of my shirts. I wore it Monday. Shuffling around laundry, still smell it. It smells amazing. If you get this on clothes, it's gonna be there till you wash. So, that's that. It lasted me about 10 and a half hours, which for me is all damn day. Because fragrances usually do not last that long on my skin. My skin usually metabolizes fragrances very quickly. Get the traffic again. I do not like the idea of being in traffic. say the G word, I gotta retune that language. So trifling. Yeah, so for performance, I'm gonna rate it a 10 performance. Because it is just that good. When you're good, you're good. Play. Now, as with everything in life, Fragrance is subjective. I don't get much play on my fragrances partially because I haven't been going out much, one. And second, I don't particularly wear my fragrances for compliments, but my partner does compliment my fragrances the one that he likes. He says no words about the ones he doesn't like. This one, he actually liked. This one he complimented. Which is rare because I've noticed not necessarily a niche person. The niche fragrances, not here for them. Unless they are certain Manceras or the more mainstream types of niches. It's much more of the mainstream, generally fresh, sweet, good smelling fragrances, appealing scent profiles, tried and trues. Those are the types of scent profiles that generally catches attention. And that's usually my marker for the general public. That's the individual that I gauge general public, general consensus fragrances by. If you want to know if it's mass appealing, that's how I gauge if it's mass appealing, if he likes it by. That's my, I'm going to call it my genetic marker. That's my litmus test. That's what I call him. That's my litmus test to say if it's a mass appealing fragrance, he likes it. It's gonna run the lines of a mass appealing fragrance. Does it generally smell good? He likes it? Yes, it generally just smells good. He does not care about the notes. He does not care about the perfumer necessarily. He tends to air on the side of the Tom Ford some Mancera, those types, you know. More or less the fresh, clean, sweet, Paco Rabanne, 
as his jam. CI, it does have a nice scent cloud. I will say this, I can smell it about in the two and a half foot radius on my wrist. I can smell it about a foot and a half away. It undulates off of my skin, so like I'll smell it in waves. This may be one I go at Nas with too because it does have such a strong presence. After time, your nose may just, you know, kind of mute it a little bit so that you can pay attention to things going on around you. You need a break from it every now and again. I totally get that. All in all, is it a copper drop? I only got a sample of it. This is five mil. It was full. That little bit I sprayed on is half of it. And I'm happy to spray it. So I sprayed on about two, two, two and a half, two mil. One wearing. It's a cop to me. This is, I feel like, gonna be in heavy rotation for summer for me. This is one that I'm actually gonna get my entire life wearing this summer. If and when I go back outside. I wore it on a bike ride the other day. Along the beach of the lakefront. And through sweating and through the activity, it lasted. So it's a performer for sure. And I ain't mad at it. I like a fragrance that performs and gives me my money as well work like like I work work you know what I mean so I was here for it present <laughs> present and accounted for I was it's a cop to me I think you should definitely give it a try because it is an uncommon scent I don't hear a lot of talk about it and you deserve to explore fragrances that a lot of people aren't talking about especially the ones that are of quality I've gotten to the place where I'm a lot more centered about the quality of a fragrance than the quantity. I will be honest, it was a blind bat too. I took the risk so you didn't have to. You're welcome. Okay? Okay. So, knowing what I know, full bottle it. I like the naming convention. The naming convention was interesting. Ood ever. And I was like, what the hell is Ood ever? So I guess the moniker that's left off is like, what's not being said is the coolest ooh ever, or the best ooh ever. It's just ooh ever. Whatever you want to put, ooh ever. You know? So, and then I'm learning that too. It's a lot to be said in the unsaid. And you can say a lot in the unsaid. So, whatever. Like, whatever. Whatever. So it's been your man on Common Sense. I appreciate y'all for coming along on this fantastic voyage with me. As always, I love you from the bottom of my heart, the top of the sides, and all the way around. And then we're going to pick it up and love on you underneath. And, uh, out. Till next time. All right, y'all.